it got windy real fast. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, jeez. Whoa. That was close. Not a good day to fly the drone. Yeah, this wasn't very smart. Not a good day to fly the drone. I actually crashed it into a small tree. Luckily, it's in one piece, but it got up there probably 200 feet, and uh, it was pretty windy where I thought it was gonna flip it over or take it away. It was hard to control coming back from the trees. Anyway, this isn't a learn how to fly your drone video because uh, I'd be a terrible example of that. I am gonna talk to you about pond skimmers today, though. Finally, we're gonna start talking something water feature related, which is what I do for a living. So we're not gonna be whining about my hip or talking about drones or anything like that today. So um, I'm actually gonna talk about pond skimmers. When I'm explaining a skimmer to somebody for the first time, and um, I'm usually on a phone conversation, I'll ask them, have you ever been in a swimming pool? And you know that rectangular square? Rectangular square? The hole in the side of the pool where it draws the leaves in and other debris? Well, that's a skimmer. On a pond, we have a very similar situation where we install a skimmer and it has the same function where it draws debris in and gives you a single collection point that you can do your maintenance from. Most people that I talk to when they've installed their own pond, they usually go with a plastic tub or a rubber liner. So they'll dig a hole, they'll put the tub in or the liner in, and they'll put a pump in the bottom of the pond. Well, they realize pretty quickly that that pump gets clogged and it usually gets clogged quite often. So then they're pulling the pump out of the pond once a week or maybe even a couple times a week depending on their situation. And they're cleaning all that muck off there and the, the algae, putting the pump back in and then they do the same ritual over and over again. Well, the problem becomes when it's very difficult to get to the pond or you're older and you've got to kneel down and drag that thing out of there, it's not such an easy process. So what a skimmer does, besides draw debris in and give you a nice collection point, it gets that pump out of the bottom of the pond, puts it into a place where it's very easy to access. More importantly, it's gonna be pumping mostly clean water because there's a filter in there and there's a debris basket where instead of you having to pull the pump out of the bottom of the pond all the time, now it's just something that you're cleaning out a basket once in a while, maybe washing off a filter. Now, how would you install a skimmer onto an existing pond or onto a new pond. First of all, it only works if you've got a rubber liner pond. So if you have a tub pond or you have a concrete pond, putting a skimmer on for us is really not that feasible. Um, if you have a rubber pond and it's been there for a while and the rubber starts to get pretty brittle and hard, it's really not feasible at that point either because you need to make a good connection with the, uh, the existing liner and taking a chance on an old pond to cut a hole in it, not something we get involved in. But if you've got a a fairly new pond where it's maybe only four or five or six years old or a new installation. Let me show you exactly how we put a skimmer in. We're working with a Signature 1000 skimmer here. We'll start by putting the fittings together on the skimmer. Then we're going to go ahead and place the skimmer in the position in the pond where we'd like to have it across from the waterfall for a good cross flow. We're going to start by determining what our water level will be by the surrounding landscape. Here we're using a laser level but you can use a regular level with some stakes or perhaps a string line. Once we've established what our grade is going to be for the skimmer, we're gonna measure down and find out what the bottom of the skimmer is compared to what the overflow inside of it for the water level is. We wanna be sure to compact the excavation so the skimmer has no chance of settling once the installation is complete. Standing inside the skimmer while backfilling is a good idea it keeps the skimmer from moving while you're placing the dirt around the skimmer. Once backfill is complete, you can go ahead and hook up your plumbing. Here we're using two inch flexible PVC so it does get glued together. Once the plumbing's finished, the face plate is next. We're gonna place the pond liner up against the face of the skimmer and poke a few holes where the recessed nuts are. You can use an awl or a really thin screwdriver to do this. Once you've located those holes, you can stick a few starter screws in it just to hold your place. After you've punched all the holes for the face plate and the skimmer, you can go ahead and put the actual face plate on with the bolts through the liner and apply your silicone sealant. Approximately a quarter inch bead of silicone is what you're gonna want across all the bolt holes. 
Usually with the bottom screws, we'll carefully start by threading them in by hand and then work our way around the skimmer, finally tightening everything up with a screwdriver. Once the screws are tight, you can go ahead and trim out the excess liner that's inside the opening of the faceplate. Install your filter rack, your pump, your mesh filter, and finally your skimmer basket followed by the fake rock lid. Woo! Okay, everybody awake now. Sorry if I'm not the best narrator. It was a little boring, I apologize. So that's how we install our signature 1000 skimmer. Pretty much every skimmer we install is the same process where it's the unit going in, the faceplate connection, and all the other stuff that goes along with it. So if you have a pond and you're looking to install a skimmer, just keep a couple of things in mind. Think about how old your liner is. If it's real old and brittle, you're probably not gonna want to attempt it because you might not get a good seal there and then you're gonna have a leak issue. New pond with a liner, go right ahead and install a skimmer. If you'd like to learn more about the Aquascape skimmers, I did a whole review right here on the 200, the 400, and the 1000 skimmer. So check that out if you'd like to see more about skimmers. So that's it for me today, guys. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe below, hit that button, leave me a like, or leave me a comment, I'd love to hear from you. Hopefully you found some value in today's vlog. See you on the next one. I, I,